Hello everyone, this is Inside the Americas, coming up. Bolsonaro is back. The controversial Brazilian president scores a big win this week with two close allies voted to top jobs in Congress. Then you'll meet the new Republican Congresswoman Mitch McConnell has accused of spreading conspiracy theories that could split the party in two. And U.S. rock star Marilyn Manson dropped from his record label after a series of women accuse him of abuse and sexual assault. I'm Jeannie Godula. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro scored a significant political victory this week after two of his allies were elected to the top jobs in both houses of Congress. It's a welcome change for the far-right leader who's been facing growing pressure and even calls for impeachment. Wasim Corne explains. Brazil's Congress has chosen two new leaders for the lower house and the Senate, and both of them are seen as politically close to Jair Bolsonaro. Arthur Lira, the new Speaker of the Chamber of Deputies, and Rodrigo Pacheco, the new Speaker of the Senate, will play the role of gatekeepers in Brazilian politics, with the power to decide which legislation is debated and voted on. More importantly, the Speaker of the Lower House has the power to accept or dismiss motions to impeach the President, which had been on the radar of the previous Speaker and dozens of members of Parliament for months. Bolsonaro still faces dozens of motions of impeachment, including 20 over his chaotic handling of the pandemic. The president has often refused to wear a mask and criticized restrictions imposed by mayors. Just days ago, rallies were held in several Brazilian cities to protest against the far-right leader. É o ato de hoje é mais um ato nacional pelo fora Bolsonaro, pela vacina já e pela volta do auxílio emergencial. There were similar scenes in the capital, Brasilia. Demonstrators here mimicked suffocating to death as they allude to the severe shortages of medical oxygen being experienced in some parts of the country. Estou aqui no Stop Bolsonaro para dizer chega a esse governo genocida, esse governo que atenta contra os direitos humanos, que atenta contra o povo brasileiro, contra a saúde pública. E aí estamos como resultado desse desgoverno com mais de 220 mil mortes pelo Covid. Chega de Bolsonaro, impeachment já. The latest scandal to engulf the government involves the amount spent on food for the federal administration, some 280 million euros, up 20 percent compared to the year before. One of the most jaw-dropping numbers involves condensed milk, 23 million euros, enough for two to three tons per day. Bolsonaro, though, is taking it all in his stride. In this video, he's seen poking fun at the scandal, exchanging cans of condensed milk with a Brazilian YouTuber. The 65-year-old already has his eyes set on his re-election campaign for 2022. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a new Republican congresswoman from Georgia, just one of hundreds in the House. But in the words of Senator Mitch McConnell, she's behind loony lies that could be a cancer for the GOP. Taylor Greene is symbolic of the power struggle within the party, and her fate is now in the hands of House Republicans deciding whether to punish her for extreme comments she made before winning her seat. Splintered and at an ideological crossroads. Perhaps no other elected lawmaker currently embodies the cracks in the Republican Party, as newly elected Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. A believer of far-right QAnon conspiracy theories and a staunch supporter of Donald Trump's, she's become an outspoken voice in Congress, peddling racist, anti-Semitic ideas. There would be no mass shootings at school. She's harassed high school shooting victims, having claimed and then retracted that the attacks were staged and endorsed violence against Democrats. House Democrats are mounting efforts to formally strip the 46-year-old representative from Georgia of committee positions if Republicans don't do so. Weighing the ultimatum, but also the risk of angering Trump supporters, the House's leader, Kevin McCarthy, has remained silent. But the Senate's Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, entered the fray and blasted Green in a statement. Loony lies and conspiracy theories are cancer for the Republican Party and our country. Somebody who suggested that perhaps no aeroplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, that horrifying school shootings were pre-staged, and that the Clintons crashed JFK Jr.'s aeroplane 
is not living in reality. In the last four years, to which the representative shot back on social media. The real counsel for the Republican Party is weak Republicans who only know how to lose gracefully. Marjorie Taylor Greene's continued calls that Donald Trump won the election and that it's Joe Biden who should be impeached. They mirror continued convictions held by part of the Republican base. And lawmakers know that. Some are even pushing for sanctioning Republicans who voted in favor of Trump's impeachment. Maneuverings that illustrate that the Republican Party is, with Donald Trump still in the shadows, split on its ideals and the direction of its next chapter. Our picture of the week is this one, a distraught and handcuffed nine-year-old girl. Police in Rochester, New York, restrained and scolded the girl who was screaming at her father, spraying an irritant in her face and telling her to stop acting like a child. The whole thing was recorded by body cameras, leading to the officer's suspension. Police said officers were responding to a report of family trouble. Also in the U.S. this week, rock star Marilyn Manson was dropped by his record label over allegations of abuse. Manson's ex, Westworld star Evan Rachel Wood, publicly named the singer on Instagram, saying he had horrifically abused her for years. Manson has called the allegations horrible distortions of reality. Yenna Lee has the story. Thank you for inviting me to testify today. In 2018, Evan Rachel Wood shared her experience as a survivor of sexual abuse before Congress. At the time, she didn't name her aggressor. Waking up to the man that claimed to love me raping what he believed to be my unconscious body. And the worst part, sick rituals of binding me up by my hands and feet to be mentally and physically tortured until my abuser felt I had proven my love for them. Three years later, the U.S. actress has come forward with a name, accusing her ex, singer Marilyn Manson, as her abuser. The name of my abuser is Brian Warner, also known to the world as Marilyn Manson. He started grooming me when I was a teenager and horrifically abused me for years. Since this public allegation, four other ex-girlfriends have come forward with harrowing stories of harassment, threats and rape. All of them describe Manson as a violent manipulator. Rose McGowan, a leading figure of the Me Too movement and herself a former partner of Manson, was quick to show her support to the women. And disgusted. But I am mostly proud. Proud of Evan Rachel Wood and the others who've come forward against Marilyn Manson, my ex. It takes time to come forward. And again, I am proud, proud of these women and anybody who stands against an abuser. Marilyn Manson denies the accusations. Obviously, my art and my life have long been magnets for controversy, but these recent claims about me are horrible distortions of reality. Despite the singer's denials, his music label and agent have cut ties with him. The makers of TV series American Gods have also edited him out in upcoming episodes. Next, the man who founded and built e-commerce giant Amazon is stepping down from his position as CEO. Jeff Bezos is handing over the reins to the head of Amazon's cloud services, Andy Jassy, but he is going to stay on as the company's executive chair. Revenues at Amazon have soared during the pandemic, and the company Bezos started in his garage has made him the richest man in the world. Catherine Viet explains. Stepping back from day-to-day -day operations after nearly 30 years at the helm, Jeff Bezos says he's not retiring, but shifting his focus to new initiatives. As exec chair, I will stay engaged in important Amazon initiatives, but also have the time and energy I need to focus on the Day One Fund, the Bezos Earth Fund, Blue Origin, the Washington Post, and my other passions. What began in a garage as a humble online bookseller has morphed into one of the most influential companies in the world, worth nearly $1.7 trillion. It's made Bezos one of the world's richest men, with a fortune estimated at nearly $200 billion. Known as the Everything Store, Amazon now produces movies, sells groceries, is a leader in cloud computing services and a growing rival to both FedEx and UPS in logistics. And Bezos will continue to have broad influence over the company. 
What's significant about what Jeff Bezos has done is the magnitude of that disruption. You know, there are very few markets um, that are have been left untouched um, in some way as a result of what Amazon has become. But there have been bumps along the way, including labor disputes and tensions with regulators. Amazon is currently facing multiple investigations, both at home and abroad, into whether it unfairly abused its dominant position in the sector. And finally, the east coast of the United States was hit with several feet of snow this week. And while the storm brought with it pileups and travel headaches, it also brought snowball fights and sledding. Even the giant pandas at the National Zoo in Washington got into the act. As the zoo's Twitter feed said, there were slides, somersaults, and pure panda joy. We'll leave you with those pictures. Thanks for watching Inside the Americas. We'll see you next week for all the news from north to south. We are journalists and normally you have to listen to us, but you have things to tell us too. Maybe you've experienced a dramatic event or you've got something important to say. You want to make a difference. That is why we created The Observers. Now the first step is very easy. You get in touch with our team. Send us your images, tell us what you've seen. And then it's our job to get your voice out there on our site, on social networks, on your mobiles and tablets, and on TV, of course. You can appear in our weekly show via webcam. Or perhaps we'll come see you in person, where you live, in your country, your town. And we'll work together on a report for our investigative show, The Observer's Direct. So you get the idea. This show is your show, your way to get your voice out to the world. Liberté, égalité, actualité.